below the red dot over there. The in council lighting. So you're reasonably aware of how this works, I suspect. Thank you. Ten yes. minutes. I'll tell you when eight minutes are up. Yes. And uh, and uh, the floor is yours. So thank right. you. Thank you, uh, Chairman Wilson, councillors. Uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to come and just speak very briefly to my submission. Um, I don't wish to add anything extra to the, to the submission. I think it covers it pretty well. But I just wanted to appear in in person and and say that we do really value. Hawke's Bay Tourism's role and what they do and the way we're working together to try and leverage results. Um, just, I know you're all aware of the importance of tourism as a value contributor to the economy. Really important for Napier, really important for Hastings and, and especially important for Hawke's Bay. So um, we work in quite closely with Hawke's Bay Tourism. Uh, we've recently attended meetings there with them. Um, the coordination and organising of those events is really important to us. Um, it allows us to leverage off that um, and rather than duplicating facilities and duplicating effort, um, we can get in behind and add something extra to it. Really important for my facilities, and I run a series of facilities, and interesting you talk about the aquarium and MTG, they're both a couple that come under my wing. So um, really important. Um, good, strong, practical working relationship that we've developed over a number of years. Uh, I just want you to know that that is a positive relationship as far as I'm concerned. Um, expansion of events is really important, and you'll see that Napier City is becoming more active in expanding events as well. Um, and I'm pleased to see the cooperation and working together with Hawke's Bay Tourism to develop those events. Um, the relationships that Hawke's Bay Tourism has with people like Tourism New Zealand, um, the media and industry partners is really important and we get benefits out of that. And really my final note, which is down at the foot of, the, foot of my presentation, is the funding. Um, I get concerned when uh, organisations such as Hawke's Bay Tourism don't get an inflation adjustment. It's, um, it makes it really difficult moving forward when you've got your major costs, which is uh, your wages and salaries, which are adjusted upwards each year generally. Um, I don't think it hurts for a year or two occasionally to have to really rework your budgets, but over an extended period when you're not increasing funding, it eventually leads to uh, less ability to, to deliver results. So I'll just put in a plea for that um, as you move towards your 10-year plan and just considering the general level of funding, because tourism is a, is a very important contributor in the GDP to the area, which you're probably aware of, just over half a billion dollars. So it's, it's an important contributor. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Fergus. Right, OK. There's uh, obviously some questions looming. Councillor Dick. Thanks, Neil. I guess my question's a bit peripheral. I hope Chairman won't shut me down. But, OK, you mentioned those two major facilities that are part of your suite of um, management responsibilities, MTG yes. and the aquarium. Um, and I guess just following on from the last issue we talked about, the affordability, in particular for school groups, to visit those facilities, is there some equivalence or is one dearer than the other? No, they're, they're equivalent pricing and they're, they're at a concessionary rate. Yeah. So we do get um, government funding through the LEOTC program, Learning and Education Outside the Classrooms. Right. So um, off the top of my head, I think it's $4 entry fee, um, okay. which at the aquarium we have three qualified teachers there. Um, mm -hmm. We have two qualified teachers at the MTG, so we've got quite major investment in those programs. Okay, mm. okay, that's fine. And, uh, okay, uh, MTG seems to have its teething problems, if you yes. read the paper, yes. which no doubt you'll sort out, Yes. Um, but how's the aquarium go? Very well. Good. Yeah. And just a, probably a comment there, we get over 100,000 people a year through the aquarium, which puts it into one of the major attractions in New Zealand. Um, we're Qualmark graded there, and the Qualmark grading that we get is 96%, is which is one of the highest gradings that's available. So we do set some very high standards and get some very good results in there. Just to follow on from that, um, you know, tourism and Napier, uh, is there anything on the horizon for, you know, um, chasing a, a, a more, a higher tourism profile, perhaps, in New Zealand? 
like have you got any uh, other activities planned as Napier or have you got other facilities in the pipeline etc? Well I think the development through the, uh, the city development working group which we've got a specific working group which we're working and we have Rod Drury on that group and councillors and senior staff um, that's working and looking for opportunities. Um, I think you've seen the development along the Marine Parade which is largely around family based attractions. Um, that's starting to bring some vibrancy. We've got things like the All Black Test coming against Argentina and we're looking to put a whole lot of events around that and really bring, bring the place alive. Uh, so there's, yeah, there's a lot happening. Okay, further questions. Councillor Scott. Thank you Mr Fergus for a very clear um, messaging there. Just um, one rather pointed question I guess. Do you consider that Napier has benefited or not benefited from having a regional tourism um, organisation um, advertising a wider region than just Napier? Well we definitely see it as a benefit, definitely. Can I just make a follow-on question Bim. from that? So, um, something that bothers me about the amount of money we spend on spend on tourism is a trying to measure the results of the expenditure and b determining that we're doing the right things, yes. taking the right steps. Do you have any suggestions as to how we might more accurately measure our success? Um. It's a difficult one straight off the top of my head. Um, be very happy to come back to you on that. Um, we'll back to the councillors on that. Just I'm straight certainly, off the top of my head. Yes, yeah. yes. Be very, very happy to come back. Thank you, uh, Councillor Graham. I'm just uh, a newbie, so I don't really yes. understand all the issues. But um, I'm quite interested in what degree of management you have in the in the museum and the aquarium. Firstly. Um, they're both, I think, um, the aquarium especially is a really excellent facility and yes. take my kids there a lot. Mm. And against the trend, I actually like the museum as well. Mm. But we heard today that um, their invoicing is having some issues. Yes. What, are you going to comment on that? I have, I've written. <laughs> Were you here when that I was... I took my pen, that, pen out and wrote it down. Cause because they're... That, that upsets me. Yeah, yeah that, that really upsets, upsets me. me as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. get highly upset about that. So I will be following that up as soon as I get back. Until <coughs> tomorrow. Yep. <laughs> Thank than you. Me. OK. Uh, Councillor yeah. Pott. Nice to see you here. Um, Thank you. Just um, talking about Hawke's Bay Tourism and, um, and Napier City Council, um, working together a lot more now, um, uh, is that uh, something that you've noticed and, and in what ways? Oh, absolutely. I think um, just trying to leverage, leverage off the... Uh, operation. Uh, I think when, and I noted in my presentation that uh, the video branding exercise that was done, we were looking at doing our own video work, uh, Hawke's Bay Tourism and, um, came to us and came to Hastings Council as well and we combined forces. That saved us quite a bit of money, we got much better bang for our buck and I think Annie could probably confirm that it gave, regionally gave a better bang for a buck as well. So we were able to do specific Napier work on that at a very economic rate. Just a follow-up, if you don't mind. Um, with Hastings, I mean, a lot of criticism in the past has been um, sort of not working together and sometimes having events at similar times rather than sort of planning ahead. Yep. Is, is that being worked on? Definitely been worked on, and I think there's, there's a good degree of cooperation. Um, what's reported is not necessarily what's happening behind the scenes, and I think Hawke's Bay Tourism plays an important role in providing that brokerage between both Hastings and Napier and I, I can definitely see a change in that. Thank you. A minute or so left. Any other questions? Any other final comments from you? No, Mr Fergus. Thank you. Thank, good to see you here Great. and uh, thank you for Appreciate your presentation. Opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.
Okay, well, I'll start by introducing myself while we're sorting this out. Um, uh, just, just, my name. And, and welcome, David. Um, ten minutes, you, you know the drill, and yep. I'll, I'll tell you when eight minutes are up if you want to start asking cool. some questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, um, the reason why I'm here, my skill and expertise is in destination tourism. My MBA, which, which I graduated in 2009, the specialty of that was destination tourism with a final focus on this area and Napier City. So that gives me a slightly different outlook from perhaps one of mere bureaucratic continuance. Just a sec. The key statistic that I'd like you to look at is produced by Tourism New Zealand, and it comes from what they call their commercial accommodation monitor. Now, the purpose of this survey is to provide an authoritative set of information on the supply and demand for accommodation at both national and regional level. In other words, it is to provide information that facilitates productive investment. the CAM, or Commercial Accommodation Methodology. This survey is a census, okay? It's not a sample, it's not a poll, it's a census. This information is from Statistics New Zealand's website. It's a census of all short-term commercial accommodation units that are GST registered and have a turnover of at least $30,000 per annum. Short-term accommodation is defined as less than one month. Respondent participation is compulsory as it is collected under the Statistics Act 1975. Here we have Hawke's Bay area, March 2007 to March 2014. Now, when we look at that, we can say, as we meant to, are we going in the right direction? Are we putting up, the, doing the right things to encourage investment? Or are we being a little bit frivolous? The gain loss in that period, 2007 to 2014, which I've split into two periods there for you to show that it is continuous decline, to get that gain back to 2007 levels, we need a 19% increase in visitor arrivals, a 19% increase. So a lot of money has been poured in and continues to be poured in. Your money, your council money, and you're going in the wrong direction. New Zealand wide. Is this a New Zealand-wide trend? Here we have the New Zealand-wide CAM statistics. That also shows a loss, but nowhere near the same level. And in fact, if you take out Canterbury, which had an earthquake that caused considerable destruction to the central tourism hub, then you find that the overall national decline is 0.2. What is the difference between 0.2 and 19% decline? It is everything from an investment purpose. And it should be everything in terms of your deciding to carry on with the outcomes that you're getting for your funding. Of course, the question is, why has this happened? You know? Essentially, the tourism market is destination 
not regional or commodity driven. So people go to Taupo, not Waikato milk country. They go to Rotorua, they go to Queenstown. And here, in order to get the best results, you have to decide what your tourism destination is. The United Nations World Tourism Organization say that it is where, a destination is where people stay for one night or more. Well, the hub of your accommodation is in Napier City. Hawke's Bay is a commodity brand. It's a great brand for apples, it's a great brand for for wine, it's a great brand for pork bellies. It's a great commodity brand. However, there is nowhere in the world that agricultural commodity branded areas are tourism, tourism destinations. Whether it's the Colburn Valley, whether it's Idaho for potatoes, it doesn't matter. It doesn't work in the marketplace. So, have you become detached from the marketplace with your concept of a regional commodity, that tourism is a regional commodity. Is it possible that the market does not think of tourism as a commodity? They think of it as a place where they go to destinations, destinations that promote a point of difference. Could that be the explanation? It is... Um, I've heard a lot of information that comes through here that comes from Tourism New Zealand, and it's good, you know, in a macro level, but you're dealing with this area. We can say, for example, well, people are turning up in uh, five-star, six-star ocean liners, as I've heard, and as the uh, media reported, sea change. Yeah, sea change in Napier City, that's true. Napier City in this period is down 19.2% in arrivals, takes a 24% increase to get back to where it was in 2000 and city, 2007, and every other New Zealand, North Island, every other North Island cruise port, cruise port city is in positive figures. Not a lot, maybe one, maybe two, maybe five percent, but they're all positive. So why are we the exception? What are we doing wrong? Why can't we learn from the statistics? Why can't we change? The, um, if you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. And it can be broad, as broad or narrow as discussions <coughs> like. Thank you, Mr George. I've got one to kick off. Um, my understanding of the CAM, which all your description was correct, but it doesn't include holiday homes and batches, which is about 60% or thereabouts of Hawke's Bay. Um, can you give us a reason why the, just the CAM alone is, yeah. should be the indicator and not, not the total okay. package? What I'd ask you to consider is why would we be 19 point, 19, why do we require a 19% lift in our commercial accommodation when the rest of the country, losers and winners, only requires a 0.2%? Why are we different? They also have holiday batches, surprisingly, and B&Bs. Just to, just to tease that out a little further, though, possibly it, it's a different makeup here in Hawke's Bay, and I, I don't know the answer to that, but the, the, the information I have is the spend is increasing as well. So where is the, the, the challenge that you put to us? I, I'm struggling with it. OK, I'm asking you to concentrate on this commercial accommodation. Yes, the spend is lifting, but there's no increase, for example, in Chinese spend here. I'm, I'm digressing. But people are also going to, the spend is measured by a cashless society, and there is an overall drift towards a cashless society. But we digress. We need to be able to explain why we have this unique failure. You can patch it up all you like, but it is your failure. It is the region's failure. And you can put whatever you like, you can put over the top of it. 
But if you don't do it, without explaining why we are out of step with the rest of the country, then it's a dereliction of your responsibility. Um, we've got time for one more. Councillor Graham. I'm out, Councillor Dick. Oh, no, oh, very chivalrous of you, uh, Councillor Dick. Oh. <coughs> David, um, <coughs> those the statistics you're quoting are for Napier City. No, they are for the region. For the region. I mentioned orally the Napier City ones to get over the funny idea that there's a sea change. If there's a sea change, it's a sea change in only one North Island cruise ship port. Okay, so the 19. 0.2% is a decrease in commercial accommodation across the whole of Hawke's Bay. Hawke's Bay requires, and it, you've got it on the paper there, I won't go back onto the overhead, requires a 19% increase in commercial, commercial accommodation arrival numbers to reach 2007 levels across the whole area. Very quickly. So you've put a lot of whys on us, and, and I don't know why, because you know I'm just a, in a different industry. But I really struggle to know why our um, accommodation is different um, numbers, our numbers different from the cruise ships, when our cruise ships are building up. And why would we be any different, um, in Apia specifically, than any other cruise ship destination? You're exactly right. That is exactly the problem, and that needs to be answered. And what, have you got an answer? Yes. In my opinion, it is because by going to, unlike Rotorua, Tauranga, um, Queenstown, etc., by going to a regional mar marketing model, a commodity marketing model, that so suits commodity rather than the destination marketing model. And destination, there is, there is a clear methodology for identifying a destination. And a destination is, uh, is built by private sector investment over time. And in Napier, we've had 150 years of that. We can do, you can do things like have a cycle on Easter weekend, a cycle event, that an thank event... You, thank you, Mr George. We've run over time, but I, I understand your um, passion about this, so thank you. OK. If, uh, just one thing. If anyone wants to uh, to go further into this, Talk to I'm your available. Phone. Just, you've got my email address there. Thank you. you just tag me. You know, he has, he's running out of time. He's running out of time. I take, take it up offline, offline, right I would suggest.